Hey guys, it's Taku. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. I will talk about manga in just a second, but the first thing you probably noticed is I dyed my hair. I had planned to do an ashy brown for a while now, and I finally got around to getting that done. So I'm really happy with the results. We just did it all at home, and yeah, I think it looks great. But let's go ahead and talk some manga. This is going to be a wrap-up vlog of the last nine-ish volumes that I read for the 25 Days of Manga Holiday Readathon. I've been having lots of fun um, just burning through so many of volumes on my shelves. And yeah, um, today's theme, as you can see by the title of this video, is Strength and the Shoujo Spirit. That means all of the books that I read pretty much cater to the shoujo demographic, as well as contain themes of strength and bravery and perhaps finding honor and truth within oneself. So of course the two titles I ended up occupying this whole block with were Yona of the Dawn and Snow White with the Red Hair. We'll go ahead and start with Yona of the Dawn since that is what I read next in the Holiday Readathon. First was Volume 7 of Yona of the Dawn. In this volume, we're getting a lot of resolution to the previous um, sort of kidnapping um, pirate arc um, that happened like a volume or two ago. I don't know, it had been ages since I had picked up a volume of Yona of the Dawn and kept reading. But it was nice to get that resolution. And of course, we get the introduction of Jeha here, who is the Green Dragon. Manga readers and of course, anime watchers will know this volume for having the iconic scene of Yona shooting down Kumji. And it is just the greatest thing ever. Next we have volume 8 which is perhaps like one of the most interesting volumes of the series so far that I've read. For one, Suwon takes most of center stage, but then also the way that it's divided, not only just the narrative shift, we also get sort of really small like tournament type game. In this volume, Suwon visits the Earth Tribe General and um, convinces him to throw sort of a celebration and one of those celebrations involves war games. So we get like the whole lowdown of the rules and the play-by-play -play and every single part of it as Suwon is slowly trying to win the war games against the Earth Tribe General. It's a really great volume. Um, there's lots of interesting things about Suwon that come out in this, very subtle things that I'm not going to spoil here. And we have volume 9 of Yona the Dawn, which actually has one of my favorite covers on the front with Zeno here. I love this character so much, even though we don't really know a whole lot about him yet. But yes, the four dragons are united, and if I remember correctly, this is exactly how the um, anime ended. So I think part of this volume, at least for me, was new territory, and a lot of it actually revolved revolves around my favorite, which would be Sinha. I love the blue dragon so much. We get a lot of awakening powers from him since he hasn't really used his powers thus far. And I just found this volume super interesting. Um, so yes, lots of great reads from Yona of the Dawn. All right, the other great shoujo read that I had was Snow White with the red hair. Of course, I could not go a strength in the shoujo spirit without talking about Snow White and all of the wonderful characters in this manga. This is arguably the beginning of the actual plot of the story. And that begins with um, the first prince Izana coming home and greeting Zen and meeting Shiryuki for the first time. Izana is such a character. Um, not only is he kind of pompous and ahead of himself, but he's also very princely and he's very hard to approach. And that just really challenges Shiryuki to either rise to the level that he is demanding and to prove herself or to pretty much leave the castle because she doesn't feel like she is worthy. Even though we all know that Shiryuki and Zen are totally worth it for each other. I love this volume so much. But my Snow White didn't stop there. I do have volume four here. In this volume, we are getting um, a little bit more look at some of the I guess geographic qualities of the country that they live in and one of them is sort of you know the invention I guess of the messenger bird in this I like Key Hall's little story here and I remember a lot of this I think from the anime in volume 5 we have the beginning of the long Tanburan arc and basically Prince Raj has asked Shiryuki back to the palace and um, all of the shenanigans and oh god so much goes wrong but the heart is there, the heart is always there with Prince Raj, so that continues in Volume 5. And in Volume 6, which actually has one of my favorite covers right here on the front, I really like this one. And Volume 7 right here, we get the resolution to the Tanburan story, and we finally move on to um, some other things. One of them is the Palace Exhibition Day, there's a fun little play in here. Either that or it's in the other volume, I honestly can't remember. Um, but this volume just goes to show that although they are in love with each other, Zen and Shiryuki, there are a lot of 
role defining things that kind of make it hard to meet up. That is until volume 8 with this delectable Obi on the cover and Zen and Shiryuki pretty much have the talk as it says here on the back of this volume. Um, I think that's a great way of putting it because they pretty much talk about their goals and what they want in life and um, this is a huge leap forward for them if anyone knows this series that we are nine volumes in and it's very tame and I mean not like anything happens in this volume but I think people reading Snow White will come across this and this is a landmark volume for them. I really enjoy enjoyed finishing here for now. I do plan to pick up more volumes of this series, but for now, if this is going to be the way that I end, I will gladly take it. And we finally get some Obi backstory. Like, that's great. Like, we've known this guy for so many volumes and he does, like, we don't, he just disappears into the dark and we literally don't know anything. So it's finally nice to know just a little bit more about him, even if it's just a peek sort of into the dark past that he has had. But guys, that pretty much concludes everything that I have read. That was nine volumes of manga. It is the second block of three in my 25 days of manga holiday readathon. I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these titles, this video, or your own readathon reads down in the comments below. I'm enjoying these so much. And yes, um, I think the readathon is a great way to just pick up volumes off your shelf and finally read them for once, especially if you've been collecting so many of them, um, like I have been building up with Yona and Snow White. And now I can go buy more and it just feels great that I I can buy the manga and read it and then go buy more. It's so rewarding. I don't know why I stopped doing this so long ago. But yes, read your manga, buy more manga, read it again. If you want to follow more of my 25 days of manga antics, definitely check out my Twitter at Takuto Anime Cafe or on a blog by the same name, which I will leave linked in the description below. I am trying to do some of these wrap up. I know I have um, like one or two for Yon of the Dawn and I've got more for Kuma of the Rose King and Snow White hopefully forthcoming. And you can also follow my Instagram at Takuto AC. On my Insta, I've been posting daily story notifications. So yes, even though we're nearing the end, it's not too late to uh, check out what I've been up to. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and Till next time.